I've literally spent millions in social media marketing since 2013 and I've learned seven brutal, brutal mistakes, call them sins even, that I wanna share with you today so that you don't commit these marketing sins that I did. Hey, I totally get it. Look, spending money on social media ads is not easy. I've seen companies like bigger corporate companies that are like $100 million top line and they're like social media ads, like our people aren't on social media. And it's like, yes, they are. Like literally there's people buying jets from TikTok videos. You like, this is the world we live in. Everybody is on social media, but I get it's difficult. So it's like, should we use these platforms? Which one? How do I run the ads? You know, do I hire an agency? How do I know if the agency is good? And look, there's a lot of social media marketing agencies out there because it's been a low barrier entry business to start. So inevitably there's a bunch of young kids, you know, in their parents' basement running a social media market agency and they haven't really done much, but they're taking your money. And so what I wanna talk through for you business owners, you guys who have a company and you're trying to get paid ads to work, I'm gonna walk through all the mistakes I've made and what we now see in after being in dozens and dozens of other ad accounts, helping companies run profitable campaigns with social media ads. Sin number one is too small of a testing budget. It's just too small, it's so cute, so tiny thing. Look, when it comes to social media marketing, you at least, and I don't know why this is the case, this number I'm about to throw at you, but you need about a thousand to three thousand dollars just to test. And so this is gonna hurt the barrier to entry for some of the smaller or solopreneur businesses who maybe don't have as much revenue because they're like, man, I don't, I don't wanna spend a thousand bucks or three thousand bucks just testing if the ads work. I get it. There's pixels, right? You gotta place a pixel on a web page where you're driving the traffic so that Facebook's algorithm can learn what traffic you wanna send to it to be reinforced. Seasoning that pixel takes a certain amount of traffic in a certain amount of time. And for whatever reason, a thousand or three thousand bucks is what's required. Plus, when you're marketing an offer, so your marketing offer, your lead magnet, the thing that's getting the direct response, the click, you need enough budget to like test, is the offer working, is the creative working, is the landing page converting the way I want it to convert, all of that stuff, so you need enough testing budget. Now, you can expedite the test, right? And so, we'll have companies do $300 a day, so in three days, we've got to that $1,000 mark and we have a good idea you know, of like what's working and what's not, right? Because the first day and a half or so, the lead cost or whatever is more expensive and then it slowly gets better because the algorithm has to learn. So even before you throw in the towel, you're like, man, I spent 400 bucks and I haven't had a return on it. It's like, you haven't tested enough, okay? Testing McTesterson, you need to test some more. Okay, sin number two that I see all the time is you get so darn focused on the targeting. I gotta target the special, unique, specific person. And they have to have this specific combo of this interest and this interest, not including this interest, plus they're this geographic area, and then they're not this age and that age, and they make this much money. It's like, okay, you're focused way too much on targeting and not enough on copywriting. So think of it this way. Some of the best campaigns that I've seen maybe target one interest, or they don't target at all. I mean, literally like broad market, we just put an age range like, okay, we know our buyers are 25 to 35, United States, that's it. Like no other targeting. So yeah, the audience size is like 40 million people, but you let the copy do the work of the targeting. So the first line is, are you a real estate investor? Okay, well, a carpenter's not gonna click it up. Or are you a plumber? It's like you speak to the identifier of who you're trying to target, I've seen simplifying the copy, focusing on the copy, identifier, problem you have, this solves that, call to action, click here. Simple, 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 four lines of body copy, five to seven words uh, for the headline copy. And then the video, the first five seconds of talking reinforces that headline and body. Hey, so it's like the body of the ad would say, are you a real estate investor? looking to get into RV parks, right? And so the video would be like, hey, are you an investor looking to get into the RV park space? 
and then the headline says RV park investing, you know, so it's simple. And then you can spray that to a wide net of audience. And like the copy is actually performing better than targeting. So don't focus so much on targeting, focus on what's the right copy and design to this ad that's actually gonna attract the people, my ideal customers. Sin numero tres, too few ad creatives. I, I talked to businesses, they're like, yeah, I tried you know, Facebook ads, they didn't work for me. Okay, like how many ad creatives did you guys test? Oh, we tested so many. Okay, um, so how many exactly? Well, it was like, uh, gosh, it was a lot, man. It's like, you know, eight or nine. That's not enough. <laughs> so what we found, 15 to 30 ad creatives to initially test to, to find what's working. Facebook's gonna send the best people it can to get conversions because they want more of your money. It's pretty obvious. The problem is once it's already hit the ideal inner circle, and you continue to spend, continue to scale the ad spend, you're trying to get more leads. Well, the algorithm has to start widening its net because it's like, shoot, we sent them all the really good people. We still want more of their money. Okay, let's widen it a little bit. We still wanna get the right people. But over time, they're having to expand out. I've found that as you expand, having multiple creatives as you expand helps keep the performance of those ads in the area of profitability that you want. And so you gotta do a lot of creative. Don't think like, oh, ads are gonna save me because now I don't have to do you know, as much content. Wrong. You'll probably have to do the same, if not more content, but now your content's ad creative, your content's not organic. So if you have an organic channel of customer acquisition and you make a lot of content for TikTok and social media, and now you're gonna run ads alongside it, which is very important, I'm about to talk about this in another sin. You have doubled your requirement of making content. And the people that win are willing to make tons and tons of creative. Okay, we ran a coaching business that did $5 million a year top line, and all of our customer acquisition was from social media marketing. We had to make 20 new ad creatives a week sometimes, yeah like 80 pieces of ad creative in a month. So it takes way more ad creative than you think. Sin number four, Facebook ads or social media ads don't work alone. They work best in an omnipresent approach. Omnipresent. Omnipresent meaning people are seeing your stuff all over the place. So that means they see your organic content and then they see your sponsored content, your paid content, and then they see emails from you and then they get a call from one of the business developers and checking in and probably heard the number. It used to take 14 different ad impressions before a person took action from that marketing material. Well, today it's even more. It's in the 40s or 50s. And it's because people see so much marketing. The reason why people oftentimes don't click on marketing is either A, it's not talking to them and their problem, it's not speaking their voice, so they don't connect with it, or it's a credibility issue. They're like, eh, there's one ad, I've never seen this guy before. But if they've seen you a lot and they've heard from you a lot and so-and-so's talked about you and then another person's talked about you and they've seen you over here and they've seen you over there, it creates a sense of credibility that you are legitimate. And so you wanna have an omnipresent approach if you're gonna do social media marketing ads, not by himself. Sin numero cinco. Okay, there's not enough focus on the lead nurture after you paid for the leads. I see so many people who wanna market on social media, and they're like, yeah, I just, I want sales right away. Okay, yeah, so, so do the rest of us, <laughs> okay? But the reality is that doesn't happen. The reason why you have a direct response campaign, right, which is you click here, you go to this, you indoctrinate, you pitch, you present, whatever you're doing, your middle funnel stuff, you convert. And obviously you're trying to compress that sales cycle as short as possible, right? And in a lot of the space that we work in, the sales cycle is anywhere from five to 14 days. So we're in pretty short sales cycles with most of the stuff that we do. And you have to realize with social media marketing, Whatever your normal sales cycle is, it's not gonna be any different usually with social media marketing. Now you can design a funnel 
to collect the low hanging fruit, which means, okay, yeah, 10% of your sales will come in that seven day window from your ads directly. Cool, but 90% won't. 40% might take 35 days and the remaining 40% might take 100 days. And so your average lead age before they convert is 75 days. That is a number you need to track and be aware of, okay? And if this means lead nurture and you're not doing lead nurture, that means you're missing out on 90% of the sales that you've paid for with the marketing. So you gotta think of social media marketing as you are filling the top of your funnel, so the top of your business, which is you're grabbing people who've never heard of you and you're like, hear about me, right? But then you've got to warm them up and build trust and build credibility and all that kind of stuff. Yes, you can design a funnel to speed that up, but inevitably it's not gonna get everybody still. So you gotta be like, okay, I'm filling the top and I know with my average sales cycle, they're in my Instagram now, now they're in my emails and now my salespeople are calling them. So make sure you have a sales team, make sure you're working the leads, make sure you got email marketing in place, make sure you're emailing people, make sure like you DM people who like you guys need to nurture the leads, give them stuff, give them resources, help them out, give them value. Okay, sin number six, we're almost there guys. So the second to last sin is the thing that you're marketing on social media marketing ads, it's too cheap in marketing. The rule is, Whoever can spend the most to get a customer will get most of the customers. This is something I learned from Dan Kennedy, who's like the godfather of marketing and copywriting in many ways. Think about it. If the thing you sell, the lifetime value is $100 and your gross lifetime value, which means the profit on that is 50 bucks. Now you've only got a percentage of 50 bucks to spend to get a customer. Pretty tough. If your widget's a hundred bucks, but your competitor sells a similar widget for a thousand bucks, who do you think's gonna get more customers? Even if their ads are worse and their targeting is worse and their copywriting is worse and their creatives are worse, they'll win because they can literally just spend more than you. So you, you do need to be sure if you're gonna go into social media marketing advertising, the thing that you sell gives you enough margin within reason to acquire a customer, a good, number uh, that we like to stick by is we'll spend up to 30 to 35% of the net lifetime value of that service or product, right? So if the net lifetime value is say 10 grand, we'll spend 3000 to $3,500 to acquire a customer. And, and that's end of day it includes commission software, everything, right? So it's like, okay, the, we had to pay the sales guy 500 bucks, a hundred dollars, per lead, half of those leads turn into a call, so it's $200 a call, I and mean, then we're closing one out of 10 calls, so it's $2,000 plus the 500, so the cost of acquisition is 2,500, plus we factor in the software for the entire team. That's how you figure out your acquisition cost. So if my competitor was selling a similar service, but they're selling it for 5,000, not 10,000, because they're smart, and they're like, I'm gonna totally outcompete this guy because I can sell it for cheaper. Yeah, but I can market way more than you. And I can spend way more in marketing because I got more margin for it. Sin number seven, okay? This is the final sin that you guys need to not commit. And you need repentance and ask for forgiveness from thy holy one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So the, the final sin is you being too focused on vanity metrics. At the end of the day, your click-through rate, your cost per click, your CPM, none of that crap matters. Even another big one that I see in the e-com space a lot is ROAS, return on ad spend. Well, my ROAS is 10. Cool, that's a vanity metric still. Now, they're important metrics and they're leading indicators to understand what's going to happen in the business and what your customer acquisition cost is. But at the end of the day, what really matters? Profit. Let's take an example in the e-com world. We consult for a company that is a marketing agency for e-com businesses. And a lot of e-com owners care about ROAS. They're like, well, I need to stay above 4X ROAS, which what they're saying is every dollar I spend, I wanna make sure I'm making $4. And I can't keep scaling unless I keep that ROAS. Okay, well, ROAS will decrease at scale, right? It's inevitable, you're widening your net of potential buyers. But it doesn't matter, profit matters. 
let's say you get to 100 grand of an ad spend per month and that's giving you your 4X, so you're doing 400K a month times 12, so you're doing 4.8, we'll call it 5 million a year. 400K in sales, 200 grand in net profit minus the 100K, right, in ad spend, and so you profit 100K a month. Well, what if you broke your rule, but you were able to scale for breaking the rule, and so your ROAS went to 3X, not 4X. Oh, I can't, can't do it, because we need to stay at 4X ROAS. Okay, well, hold on. 400K times three would give you 1.2 million a month. Let's say the same COGS, right? Nothing changed. In fact, your COGS might get cheaper because you're at you're buying in bigger bulk, and so you might have discounts and savings with manufacturing and whatnot. But let's just say it's the same. That would put you at 600 in net profit minus the 400 you spent. It's 200K in profit. Now, is the percentage of profit go down? Sure because the row has changed, but it doesn't matter. You made more money. So the point is don't focus too much on the vanity metrics, guys, with social media marketing. Business at the end of the day is about value, something that solves real problems and having a profit as you do so. Keep it simple. So hopefully if you like this video, give it a like, a thumbs up. Um, and if you wanna hear more content like this, let me know. Peace.